Oof, sorry. Oh, that didn't work. So if my screen bonks out here, you just got to let me know because it was having trouble and I think there's a short in the cord, but hopefully it stays up because otherwise I have to reboot everything and it's pain. But we'll, we'll trudge on and we'll keep a positive attitude about this no matter what. So, uh, so as I alluded to initially, attitude is an you know, important aspect for a Christian. And, uh, and I think a lot of times in life we tend to forget about our attitude and what our attitude really is. And so kind of taking it back to the beginning and where we really need to start with all this is what is an attitude? What is our attitude? Attitude in general, the definitions are a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something. You know, typically it's reflected in our personal behavior. Another definition of it is a position of the body proper to or implying an action or mental state. Number three, truculent or uncooperative behavior, a resentful or antagonistic manner, right? You, you think of that a lot of times when it comes to teenagers and they, they have a really bad attitude. Or individuality or self-confidence as manifested by behavior or appearance or style. And these are obviously definitions provided by, a, by the world, by Merriam-Webster Dictionary is where I believe I got these. And so we see kind of an attitude is what, based on these definitions, what is attitude? Any thoughts on that? Everybody's kind of still in the, the, the New Year's Day slumber. Yes. Exactly. That's a great point. Mark, did you have another comment on that? Exactly. Perception, response. It's kind of the way we take in things and we respond to those things that, that are going on in our life. And, and I think a lot of times we lose focus on our attitude is controlled by us, right? We, we are the ones that, uh, that really make sure it is what it is. And so when I say what is attitude, and this, this cartoon kind of lays, lays out, but I've got a real chip on my shoulder, right? That defines a specific set of attitude. That's kind of the attitude when we say someone's got an attitude. Does that kind of define it? You know, maybe we say, gosh, does he have an attitude? Right? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Yes. Yeah. 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 No, and, and you're right. And what, what you're alluding to there is attitude is prevalent in everything that we do. We tend to focus in on specific attitudes that we might deem negative, right? The chip on the shoulder, the teenage attitude. Are there teenagers in here? Oh, I see them sitting in the back laughing at me. But, but an attitude being something that's a uh, maybe a negative connotation in some, some instances. But the one thing, and we kind of alluded to this earlier, is attitudes can be influenced by many factors in our lives. Our physical well-being, right? Uh, it can be hormonal, right? It can be the diet. It can be something we ate, something we did, right, physically. It can affect us in terms of how our attitude presents itself. It can be the environment. And when I say that, what do you think it mean by that? How can our environment affect our attitude? People around us, right? Think about your parents. Can they affect you? Yeah, right? They can teach you. They can grow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Friends, there's a, there's a lot of focus in terms of our environment and how that can affect our attitude in general. And then uh, suppressed anger, grief, or fears are also key in that attitude. So if we're fearful of something that might happen or, or we're angry about something that did happen. Those kind of things can affect our attitude. And, uh, and I'm not sure, can you guys read that cartoon or is it too small in print? You guys in the back, all the young guys, you, you can read that? No, you can't? 
So, uh, so the birds are talking to each other here, saying, uh, the savage chickens, I should say, you need to channel your anger into something more constructive, like, and the next one says rage, obviously. I think you can read that. But, but obviously, that's not the correct attitude that we should have, right? <laughs> when we're channeling our, our attitude into something more constructive, definitely rage isn't one of them, but it's more of a, of a positive outlook, something that, that becomes more of a pattern. And so the next one up here that I have, the seven habits of highly effective people, and this, this really starts to describe me, is coffee drinking, nail biting, teeth grinding, leg jiggling, and, and I didn't, you know, obviously there's, there's more to the list, but, but that kind of defines a lot of things that, that we think of, okay, these are effective habits, right? These get me going on the day. But, but our attitude is really the thing that's important here. When we think about the habit of a good attitude, or our attitude in general is, we repeat it over and over and over every day. It's not something that we do once and then we're done with it. No, our attitude is formed by repetition. And so, unconsciously, we may be not thinking about it, but we get stuck in a specific rut, in a specific plan, in a specific direction. And if we're not cognizant of that, and that's a negative attitude, we could definitely get stuck, right? We can stay in that pattern. We might know people that we think are in that pattern. Maybe we're in that pattern ourselves. But once again, recognizing that it's something that's going on becomes the key. And that, that habit, I think, becomes comfortable. We just kind of say, well, you know, I'm always angry when this happens. So it's always going to be that way. But does it really need to be that way? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and and you're exactly right, Jennifer. Is we, in many aspects, we don't recognize the the habits that we have and the attitudes that we present because of those habits. We might think they're perfectly fine, right? We might have a negative perspective on life. I've been told that in the past because at work sometimes I look at it from a standpoint of, oh well, this isn't going right. You know, we need to change something, and and that comes across in the way I present it as a potential negative attitude. Is that the kind of thing I want? No, right? I don't want people perceiving that I have a negative attitude just because I'm pointing something out that isn't working right, but it's in the presentation and the way I approach it that, that people are looking to. And we have to be aware of that, that we might have the best intentions, but sometimes the way it's presented, sometimes the habit that we've formed behind it makes it something that it's not intended to be. Uh, attitudes are perceptions. So specifically, it's the way you view something. How do you view things, right? Do you view things with the glass half empty, the glass half full, the glass somewhere in the middle, whatever it might be. But, but it's our perspective on things, right? Do we have a positive perspective or a negative perspective? How do we approach that? And uh, you could be in a great mood, and then something happens. What do we do when that, that goes on? Have you ever heard someone say, I was in a really great mood until such and such happened? Is that really true? Is that really how we, we react to things? Is that really how we should react to things? How should we be reacting to those type of things? When something bad happens, in a situation, like it doesn't work out the way we planned it to be, does that now set us off on the bad attitude? Angry, grumpy, upset, or do we remain positive? Do we look at it from a standpoint of, here's an opportunity, right? We always sit here and we say that. We, we talk about the challenges in life that we're going to face and how they can really make us grow. But when they occur, 
what is our reaction to them? The attitude that we have is vital in that. And so uh, the quote that I have there, don't get, me, don't get my personality and my attitude twisted because my personality is me and my attitude depends on you. That's the way the world looks at it. That's how our society reacts to everything. But is that the way a Christian is supposed to react? Yes. Exactly. Great point, Katie. It is. We, we have a choice in that. And yes, are things going to happen that make us sad, that, that upset us? Certainly. But the response to that is the attitude involved. Yes. And that's a great example. Joseph is a great example of that in, in the attitude that, that you can approach difficult situations with. You know, when we, when we look at, uh, at attitudes or perceptions and why, why, does it, why do things affect us so, so much? Why do our moods swing so drastically? We do. We allow them to, but why? Mark. Yeah, expectations are, are key, right? We have a, a plane or a path that we're taking, and that's the way it should be. And if something deviates from that, it becomes a big deal. It changes how we approach things, and, and many times it, our attitude reflects that. Attitude is more important than skill. Do you guys believe that? At work, is attitude more important than skill? Think about any situation. If someone's really talented at what they do, but they're a jerk while they do it, do you appreciate that? No, right? So, so when we look at attitude being something that's super important to us, and we focus so intently in our world on skill, right? Developing knowledge, developing skill, so that we can be better at something, how often do we spend time developing our attitude? working on that aspect of it. But think about it. What usually happens in a workplace setting when it comes to skill versus attitude? Does it always work out great for, for both parties? Does one party tend to get ahead? What tends to happen? The person that has the really bad attitude but all the skill might what? Jennifer, you got an idea? Yeah, professional athletes are, are definitely, but what usually happens is, you know, if someone is really trying hard and has a great attitude, are they going to be successful? Not always, but yes, they're generally going to be successful, right? People will give them opportunities that they may not give someone else because their attitude is good, because they're trying hard, right? But in terms of opportunities, you get multiples. But if on the contrary, you're not presenting that good attitude, what tends to happen? Ew, I went the wrong way. You don't get more opportunities, right? If you mess up one time and you have a bad attitude, you might be done. So that's what is meant when attitude is more important than skill. And like I said, we spend so much time developing 
skill in life. We practice, we train, we go to college, we, we develop skills in specific aspects of our lives that are important for our success. But what about our attitude? How much time do we spend developing that, looking at that, evaluating what our attitude really is? And so I, as I alluded to, with a really bad attitude, you react negative. If it work, you react negative to every situation that comes on. What happens? Mm -hmm. But what if you react positively? You don't get down, right? Everything will kind of stable itself out. It'll be better. The action that we present in that becomes, becomes key. And it really boils down to this law of attraction. If you can hold on to a great attitude while you're going through your present reality, you'll be forming the next reality that's coming down the pipeline. Think about that for a second. Does that make any sense? So your attitude can what? Get you to the next point and the next thing you're going to deal with and being able to get you to a better position potentially, right? Not that negative things aren't going to happen, but you're developing an ability to deal with, cope with, move forward with, and then, oh, accept what's going on. And then the attitude for the next thing is, hey, instead of being back here where I started, now I'm forward and I'm actually dealing with something different, but it's giving us the ability to deal with that, right? To change the scope of things potentially, right? In terms of where we go, what our capabilities are, right? If, and look at this from a standpoint of the church, right? If we're going through a reality right now where we're focused intently on self within the church and it's only about us and that's all we're going to do, where's our next reality? Where are we headed in the future? Still focused on us. But if our attitude is different and our attitude is focused outwardly, we're setting up what? A future, a potential, the ability to develop, to grow, to change minds, right? That's what attitude can do for us, not focus inward, but it can actually help us. It helps us inward, but it helps us outward as well. And uh, you know, this, this quote here, attitude is everything. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Do we believe that? Is attitude that important? Is it something that can affect our every situation? Katie? Yeah, and that's, that's, that's a great example, right? Not letting, letting the day or the situation affect you, but the positive attitude can actually affect those around us and then be positive. So instead of dealing with the negative situation or the negative person in a negative, harsh manner, a positive attitude can influence potentially them or potentially the other people that see that interaction. And... Uh, this just goes along with that. Our attitude is contagious, and it's worth catching, right? These are a lot of simple, like, oh, yeah, that's, that makes it seem really easy. But it truly is from a perspective of who doesn't like to hang around someone who has a great attitude? Who doesn't want to be with that person? Spend time with them. We do, right? Do we want to be that person ourselves? Hopefully, yes. Frank.
Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. It's a determination. You forgot coffee in there, though, in the morning. But, uh, <laughs> but I agree with you. We need to make sure that we're, we're getting up and we're thinking about our attitude and not starting out the day, oh, you know, I mean, what cartoon character is it? I, I think it's a, a Winnie the Pooh character. Eeyore, is that the one that's, oh, woe is me? Yeah. Yeah, so we can't start the day that way. So... Getting to where I'm headed with this lesson overall, Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12. Would someone want to read those verses for me? Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12. And obviously, I'm uh, I'm headed into the Beatitudes here. So uh, Matthew 5, 1 through 12. Who would like to read that? Frank? Thank you. So when we think about how important our attitudes are, God gave us the necessities, the instruction that we need to have positive, good attitudes, right? To, to focus on things that are important. I put in this, uh, this cartoon, and I believe this is the family circus, and I know you can't read the, the little writing here, but uh, the mom is reading, let the little children come unto me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. And the little boy has this vision of all these children coming to to God, coming to Christ, right? Happy, their attitude's great, right? That's really what it should be about for us, right? Is if we're focused intently on the true importance of life, the situations that occur to us are not going to be as important. Not that they won't cause us some heartache, not that they won't cause us some pain, but our attitude will remain consistent. And, and that's the thing is the Beatitudes are vitally important. We tend to throw them out there like, oh yeah, yeah, blessed is this, blessed is that. But, but do we realize what God wants from us? What the instruction is there? How blessed we are? Where does the word Beatitude come from? I know you probably all know this, right? Well, it's from the Latin beatus, which means happy or blessed. Beatitudes, happy, blessed, right? Pretty important. Approximately 100 statements in the Bible that begin with blessed, right? Psalms 1 verse 1 is uh, one that, uh, ooh, did I not get that one? Someone read that for me, Psalms 1 verse 1, and then Revelations 22 verse 14. Mine as well. Psalms 1, verse 1, and uh, Revelations 22, verse 13. But the fact that it's 100 statements that begin with that means what? That God wants us to be happy. He wants us to be blessed, and he wants us to have positive attitudes or the correct attitude. So who has uh, Psalms 1, verse 1? Mark. Mark. So once again, the man who is blessed or who is happy is what? Is walking in accordance with God. And then closing in Revelations 22, verse 14, who has that one? Naomi? Yeah. 
So what's going to give us the proper happiness in life? Where does that come from? It comes from God, right? Our attitudes need to reflect that, not, not be focused on, I'm happy because this went well or this project went well or I was able to do this today, right? Our attitudes should be reflected based on God. And so the fact that it's, you know, 100 statements in the Bible begin with blessed, but then the word occurs some 600 times in the King James Version. Now, I'm not exactly sure if that's plus or minus, right? But, uh, but in that range. And so the Beatitudes are just kind of the basic heart of that, right? The fundamentals. But 600 times is pretty important, right? Does God want us to be miserable? Does God want us to have a terrible life here? He wants us to appreciate what is truly important. And that's where the Beatitudes come in. The uh, the quote here, and this this just kind of struck me as funny, is uh, frankly the fact that the meek will inherit the earth isn't really good collateral. But that kind of defines what our society is about, right? Hey, right? I'm going in for a loan and I've got all this collateral because I'm going to inherit the earth because I'm meek. But that's not what God's after, right? God's after more than that from us. He's wanting us to do more, to be better, to be more cognizant of things. And so the question then becomes is where is blessedness found? How do we find it? Any ideas? (laughs) In the list, definitely. Let's look at Ephesians 1 verse 3. Ephesians 1 verse 3, and does somebody have that? Or would someone like to read that? Ron? Oh. Mm-hmm. No, no, you're, you're fine. Exactly. And that, that was, was hopefully that, that was what I was trying to get across at the first, but I definitely I appreciate that point as it is. The happy are, and that's what we're going to study a little further as we head into this, this lesson, trying to set the stage of attitude first and foremost, but we're definitely going to go a little deeper, and I appreciate that, Ivan. So Ephesians 1 verse 3. So happiness is based on what? Being in the right relationship with Christ. Are we going to be happy outside of that? Yeah, we might think we are, right? But are we truly going to be happy? Because it's going to be those little things that kind of twist at us, that cause us some anxiety. But, but if we're in the right relationship with Christ... How does that, how does this provide us with happiness? In the back. Exactly. We look beyond the short term and we look through a longer range perspective. Did I see a hand over here? Great, 
Great points. And I, I definitely agree that the Bible does give us the direction. It gives us the, the lessons we need to, to overcome those difficulties in life. And, and if we're not using that, if we're not in that right relationship, then our happiness is going to be affected by that. And we're going to struggle and we're going to be overwhelmed by the, the weight of the world. Did I see someone else's hand? Yes, Naomi. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you're, you're right. Our example is key. And if we're doing the right things, if we are focused intently on serving God and him being the most important thing in our lives, others will see that attitude. Others will see how important that is and that happiness that comes through that. Um, in the right relationship, there's, there's a few examples here. John 16, verse 33 states, These things I have spoken to you so that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Once again, relationship with God is important for us in terms of finding that happiness and developing the right attitude. Psalm 32, verses 10 to 11. Would someone like to read those verses for me? Psalm 32, verses 10 and 11. Throw in that one, and then someone else can look up Proverbs 3, Verse 13, so Psalm 32, 10 and 11, and Proverbs 3, 13. Who's got the first one? Okay, Mark. Okay. Yep, that's exactly it. Thank you, thank you. And so... Many are the sorrows of the wicked. But if we trust in God, not that we won't have them, but what? We'll know, right, that we have that end goal, right? It's not the, it's not the short vision, right? We're not looking just right ahead of us. We're looking way beyond that. We're looking to an eternity with God. So what happens right here, right now, doesn't have to affect where that's headed. What about Proverbs 3, verse 13? Katie. Yeah, and the Bible is great for this, right? Gaining wisdom, gaining knowledge, gaining the ability to, to deal with situations that we maybe haven't encountered before, but we can learn through God's word. Right? That's important. We don't have to always fail. We don't always have to go through it ourselves and, and find the hard way through it. We have lessons. We have direction. We have the guidance we need in many aspects to deal with the situations. As Mark was alluding to earlier, the world will tell you you've got to kind of pull yourself up by your bootstraps and, and take it on. God gives you that direction, the necessities. Jennifer. Exactly. And, and if we don't have that kind of hope, then life is not worth anything. Yeah, great, great points. God does keep his promises. God is there for us. And to have that hope is, is key. It's the key to, to struggling through this, this life of, of struggle, of pain, right? So where does the world look for blessedness? and happiness being the key term there, right? And, and if you see there, I, I have the, uh, the cartoon again, but here lies someone who is going to be happy tomorrow, right? That, that tends to be the attitude. We're going to be happy tomorrow. I'm going to be happy when? Why aren't we happy now? Is there a reason? So the world looks for happiness in, in these three key categories, there's going to be a few more that I add on later. But circumstance, 
self-seeking, and worldly success. Do those sound like things that are going to make you happy? In circumstance, what can that be, right? Something happened, I put a quarter into a machine and I won 100 bucks. Is that going to make you happy? Short term, right? Self-seeking, right? I'm after something. I want that. I really want it bad. Once I attain it, I'm going to be happy. Am I happy? And then worldly success, right? Hey, I've really killed it. I'm doing awesome. I got all this money coming in. I am great. Am I happy? Yes. That's true. And we do have that concept that, oh, so-and-so is going to make me happy or it's their responsibility to deal with this for me. The other way that the world looks for it, or other ways, I should say, is immorality, liquor and drugs, material possessions, power and popularity. Those are some pretty, pretty consistent themes within our world. That's what, makes, that's what many people think makes them happy, right? We don't need God. We've got all this stuff that can take away our pain. But does it? Or does it just get worse? Does it give us a positive attitude? And does it give us the happiness we're really after? Ooh, sorry, I guess I had that slide twice. So the result of that all is what? Our society is in disarray. Politically, are we doing good? Socially, are we doing good? Text me, you can tell me later. Um, <laughs> mentally, are we doing good? Right? We're in disarray in all of these facets. Why? Because we don't understand how important God is to us being happy and having the right attitude, right? Politically, it's all about us being right, right? This way should be, this way should be. Socially, we don't even want to talk to each other anymore. Do we talk to one another? Do we know what each other's doing? Do we care what each other's doing? No. We're focused on social media and what so-and-so's doing, jumping his bike over or whatever, right? Is that important? And mentally, we see it all the time. The shootings, the just rage that's out there. We're not in a good state as a society. And why is that? Once again, we don't understand what true happiness is. I'm going to have to read this one to you, but I think this, this kind of nails it uh, from a societal standpoint. Calvin and Hobbes. Know what I pray for, he's saying to, the, uh, to Hobbes? What? The strength to change what I can, the inability to accept what I can't, and the incapacity to tell the difference. And at the end, the uh, Hobbes is saying, you should lead an interesting life. Oh, I already do. But that's our mentality, right? The world's mentality is what? I don't want to. I don't want to be happy. I just want to kind of do what I want to do. And I'm going to accept that. And just don't tell me what's going on outside of there in ways I can improve it. Can we do better? Can we have better attitudes? Can we make a difference with our attitudes? And more importantly, can we be happy? You know, when we look at the Apostle Paul, he would have been in misery if that was the way he was looking at things, right? If he was looking at the world perspective on things and, you know, I just kind of want to want to meander my way through here and, you know, I just don't really want to know how I can do better. But that wasn't what he was after, right? He wanted more than that. He was stripped of everything. Wealth, fame, suffered, tried, right? Did all, he went through it all, but his attitude was what? Yeah, right? I'm, I'm running out of time, so I can't really read everything here. But he was content with what he had done and what he, what he achieved in that process, Right? On, behalf, on 2 Corinthians 12, verses 5 through 10, and I'll try to get through this quick. On behalf of such a man, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except in my regard to my weaknesses. For if I do wish to boast, I will not be foolish, for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from this, so that no one will credit me with more than he sees in me or hears from me. 
And I think that's the key, right, is, is being comfortable with who we are, right? Not trying to be this important person that we aren't or wanting people to notice us for who, what we've done and how we've done it. Where does the credit go? Does it go to us or does it go to God? He did this, but was, I mean, dealing with all these trials, dealing with all these struggles, dealing with all this persecution, as we, we look to Paul's life, was he miserable in that aspect? Could he have been miserable? Certainly, right? If he was relying on the world for happiness, he'd have been miserable, but he wasn't. Why? Because God, because who he was serving and the end goal. That was the second bell. I'm out of time. Before I close, any comments, questions, concerns? Next week, we will, uh, we will continue on and, uh, and get into the, uh, the first beatitude, hopefully. So I appreciate your attention.